No one can diminish the glory of God by refusing to worship him, just as a lunatic could not extinguish the sun by writing the word darkness on the walls of his cell. Our role should always be that of the patient to the agent, the female to the male, the mirror to the light, the echo to the voice. Our highest activity should be response, not initiative. C.S. Lewis Remember, our God is a God of abundance, and he desires nothing more than to bless us beyond our wildest dreams. So let's not get in our own way. Embrace his will, his love, and his blessings. Today God wants to bless you with a full life. We will also pray a powerful prayer with you, asking God to bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. So watch until the end and open your heart to receive the blessings of this prayer. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, there is a sad reality we must face. In our walk with God, sometimes without even realizing it, we become our own obstacles. Sometimes we wonder why the heavens seem silent or why our prayers are not answered. We pour out our hearts in prayer, hoping and longing for a sign, a response, or even a whisper to assure us that he hears us. We question, have we been forgotten? Did we do something wrong? But the truth is that God's blessings flow constantly like a river. Often, it is our actions, our choices, and our attitudes that may be preventing these blessings from reaching us. See, God's love for us is so vast, and his desire to bless us is so immense that his blessings are always flowing like a mighty river that never dries up. This river is full of healing, hope, breakthroughs and miracles, all waiting to enrich our lives. But just as a river can be obstructed, sometimes it is our own behaviors, decisions, and even the state of our hearts that act as barriers blocking these blessings. We may not even be aware of these obstructions, as they often disguise themselves as everyday choices or deeply rooted attitudes. Today we will delve into understanding these barriers and how we can restore the free flow of God's grace. On our life journey, God continually weaves threads of grace, favor, and love for each of us. But it is up to us to recognize and receive these threads to allow them to enrich the patterns of our lives. Today we will look at five barriers that can block your blessings and breakthroughs. Number one, lack of forgiveness and holding grudges. Lewis tells us, I believe there is a virtue even more unpopular than chastity. It is established in the Christian rule, love your neighbor as yourself. Because in Christian morality, your neighbor includes your enemy. And thus we are confronted with this terrible duty of forgiving our enemies. Now, think of unforgiveness as holding a heavy stone in your hand day after day. That stone becomes increasingly difficult to carry. It weighs us down and tires us out. That is what holding grudges does to us. It is like that heavy stone making our lives more difficult than they should be. The Bible tells us clearly in Matthew 6.14, For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. This means that if we want God to forgive us, we need to forgive others. It is a simple idea, but can sometimes be difficult to do, depending on the situation. Lewis says, Everyone says forgiveness is a lovely idea until they have something to forgive. And then, to mention the subject is to be greeted with howls of anger. It is not that people think this virtue high and difficult to attain. It is that they think it hateful and contemptible. But we can all choose to forgive, no matter how difficult it may be. Do what God wants you to do, and God will take care of everything else. Lewis says, I am not trying to tell you what I could do. I can do precious little. I am telling you what Christianity is. I did not invent it. And there, right in the middle of it, 
I find, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. There is no slightest suggestion that we are offered forgiveness on any other terms. It is made perfectly clear that if we do not forgive, we shall not be forgiven. Now let us return to a story often overlooked in the Bible, the story of Esau and Jacob. These two brothers had every reason to hold grudges. Jacob, with the help of his mother, deceived his older brother Esau to steal his birthright and blessing. The hurt and betrayal led to years of separation and bitterness. Esau was so angry that he even thought of killing Jacob. But over time, something transformative happened when they finally met again, instead of anger and revenge. This is what happened. Genesis 33. 4 says, But Esau ran to meet Jacob and embraced him. He threw his arms around his neck and kissed him, and they wept. This reunion shows the power of forgiveness and how it can transform years of bitterness into a moment of love and reconciliation. Lewis teaches, if we really want to learn how to forgive, perhaps we had better start with something easier than the Gestapo. One might start with forgiving one's husband or wife, or parents, or children, or the nearest subaltern, for something they said or did last week. Lewis also says that Christianity does not want us to reduce by one atom the hatred we feel for cruelty and treachery. We ought to hate them, but it wants us to hate them in the same way in which we hate things in ourselves, being sorry that the man should have done such things, and hoping, if it is in any way possible, that somehow, sometime, somewhere, he can be cured and made human again. And so, even while we kill and punish, we must try to feel about the enemy as we feel about ourselves, to wish that he were not bad, to hope that he may, in this world or another, be cured. In fact, to wish his good, that is what is meant in the Bible by loving him. Wishing his good, not feeling fond of him, nor saying he is nice when he is not. It is vital to understand that forgiveness is not just for the person who hurt us. It is also for our benefit. It frees us. Holding on to anger, resentment and grudges is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to get hurt. It affects our well-being, our relationship with God and others, and prevents us from experiencing the fullness of God's blessings. When we forgive, we are not saying that what the other person did is right, but we are releasing them from our judgment and letting God be the judge. By doing this, we break down the walls that block our blessings and pave the way for healing, peace, and spiritual prosperity. After all, every time we recite the Lord's Prayer, we are reminded, forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Essentially, Every prayer is a call to embrace forgiveness and let go of the chains that hold us back from God's divine blessings. Number two, doubt and lack of faith. Lewis tells us that the battle is between faith and reason on one side and emotion and imagination on the other. I can tell that man what is going to happen to him in the next few weeks. There will come a moment when there will be bad news or he will be in trouble, or he will be living among a lot of other people who do not believe it, and all at once his emotions will rise up and carry out a sort of blitz on his belief. Doubt can cloud our spiritual vision, making it difficult to recognize and appreciate the miracles that God manifests in our lives daily. Like a dense fog, it distorts our perception and direction. When Jesus called Peter to walk on water, it was pure, unwavering faith that allowed him to take those initial miraculous steps. However, the moment doubt crept in, he began to sink, as James 1.6 tells us, But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, 
because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. This wavering and unstable state of mind prevents us from fully embracing God's blessings. Lewis tells us that faith, in the sense in which I am here using the word, is the art of holding on to things your reason has once accepted in spite of your changing moods. For moods will change, whatever view your reason takes. That is why faith is such a necessary virtue. Unless you teach your moods where they get off, you can never be either a sound Christian or even a sound atheist, but just a creature dithering to and fro with its beliefs really dependent on the weather and the state of its digestion. Imagine trying to paint a beautiful picture, but every time you are about to make a stroke, you question the color choice, the brush size, or the stroke direction. As a result, the canvas remains incomplete and the image never fully comes to life. Similarly, in our spiritual journey, when we are constantly doubting or lacking faith, we prevent our relationship with God from reaching its full, vibrant potential. We end up with an irregular and unclear image of His plan for us, instead of the masterpiece He envisioned. In the Bible, Hebrews 11, one tells us, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for, and assurance about what we do not see. This means that even though we cannot see something, we can believe it is there just as we believe the wind is there when we feel it on our face, even though we cannot see it. Faith is believing in God and His promises, even when we cannot see Him. There is a story in the Bible about a man named Barak in the book of Judges, chapters 4 to 5. Deborah, a prophetess, told Barak that God wanted him to lead an army against their enemies, and God would guarantee the victory. But Barak doubted. He said he would only go if Deborah went with him. This showed his lack of faith. Because of this, Deborah said the honor of victory would go to a woman instead of him. And that is exactly what happened. A woman named Jael was the one who defeated the leader of the enemies. This story shows what can happen when we doubt or lack faith. We can miss out on the good things that God has planned for us. We can miss our blessings. So doubt, as a human emotion, is natural. We all at different times struggle with questions or uncertainties. Lewis tells us that the first step is to recognize the fact that your moods change. The next is to make sure that if you once accepted Christianity, then some of its main doctrines shall be deliberately held before your mind for some time every day. That is why daily prayers, religious readings, and church going are necessary parts of the Christian life. We have to be continually reminded of what we believe. That is why in these moments it is crucial to turn to God, seeking His wisdom and guidance, embracing faith, especially in uncertain times, illuminates our path, providing clarity and purpose. It is like having the right colors and vision to complete our painting, revealing a beautiful divine masterpiece. God is always ready to guide us, but it is our faith and trust in Him that transforms His guidance into blessings in our lives. Number three, disobedience and straying from God's path. Lewis says that, what is the good of drawing up, on paper, rules for social behavior, if we know that, in fact, our greed, cowardice, ill-temper, and self-conceit are going to prevent us from keeping them? Not obeying God can cause you to lose your way. Think of a time when someone gave you a map or directions to a place, but instead of following it, you decided to go your own way thinking it might be a shortcut. You found yourself lost, wishing you had followed the original path. This is similar to our spiritual journey. God gives us a map through His words in the Bible, guiding us on the right path. But when we decide to go our own way, 
not listening to him, we often find ourselves feeling lost and distant from him. Lewis says that, and in the same way, every moral failure will cause trouble, probably to others, and certainly to yourself. God is also clear about obedience in the Bible. In 1 Samuel 15, 22, it says, To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. This means that God values our obedience more than any gift or ritual we can offer. He wants us to listen and follow his ways because he knows what is best for us. Lewis tells us that one must think of all three departments, relations between man and man, things inside each man, and relations between man and the power that made him. A story in the Bible that is not often talked about but is very relevant to our topic of disobedience is about King Saul and the Amalekites. In 1 Samuel 15, God gave Saul clear instructions to destroy everything belonging to the Amalekites because of the evil they did to the Israelites. But instead Saul spared their king a gag and kept some of the best animals. He thought he could use these animals as sacrifices to God, but God was not pleased because Saul did not follow his exact instructions. Although Saul thought he was doing something good by saving the animals for sacrifice, he missed the point. Obedience to God was more important as a result of his disobedience. God no longer wanted Saul to remain king, and his reign took a tragic turn. When we stray from God's path and do not listen to him, it is like we are losing the best route he has planned for us. God's way is always for our good, even if we do not see it immediately. By being obedient and following his directions, we avoid many problems and heartaches. It is essential to always consult God, read his words, and pray for guidance. Just like that map or set of directions, God's word will always lead us to the right place, full of blessings and peace. So let us make an effort to stay on God's path and enjoy the journey he has prepared for us. Number four, pride and self-reliance. Lewis tells us that, according to Christian teachers, the essential vice, the utmost evil, is pride, unchastity, anger, greed, drunkenness, and all that are mere flea bites in comparison. It was through pride that the devil became the devil. Pride leads to every other vice. It is the complete anti-God state of mind. Here, I am talking about the tendency to rely more on ourselves than on God. Consider that you have a jigsaw puzzle and you are trying to fit a piece where it does not belong. No matter how much you push or twist, it just will not fit but instead of looking for the right piece. You keep forcing the wrong one, thinking you know better. That is what happens when we let pride control us and rely too much on ourselves. We try to force things our way, even if it is not the right way. Instead of listening to God's guidance, the Bible has clear words about pride. Proverbs 16:18 says, Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. This verse is a reminder that when we think too highly of ourselves, we are setting ourselves up for trouble. Lewis says that Christians are right. It is pride which has been the chief cause of misery. In every nation and every family since the world began, other vices may sometimes bring people together. You may find good fellowship and jokes and friendliness among drunken people or unchaste people. But pride always means enmity. It is enmity, and not only enmity between man and man, but enmity to God. God wants us to be humble, to realize we do not have all the answers, and to trust him. Let us look at the story of King Uzziah in 2 Chronicles 26. Uzziah became king at a young age, and for many years he did what was right in the eyes of God. He was successful and powerful 
but with that power, pride began to creep into his heart. He started to think he could do anything, even tasks reserved for the priests. One day, he entered the temple to burn incense, a job only the priests could do. When warned by the priests, instead of listening and humbling himself, Uzziah became angry, but God saw his pride. Uzziah was struck with leprosy right then and there. Uzziah's pride led to his downfall, relying on ourselves and thinking, we do not need God's guidance is a dangerous path. Lewis says that the real test of being in the presence of God is that you either forget about yourself altogether or see yourself as a small, dirty object. It is better to forget about yourself altogether. So it is like refusing to ask for directions when we are lost, just because we are too proud to admit we do not know the way. Some of us need to admit that we do not know everything. Some of us are too proud. But God is always waiting for us to come closer, to ask Him for help. He wants to guide us and lead us to the best paths. The key is to be humble, admit when we need help and trust God's wisdom over our own. Lewis tells us that, if anyone would like to acquire humility, I can, I think, tell him the first step. The first step is to realize that one is proud, and a biggish step too. At least, nothing whatever can be done before it. If you think you are not conceited, it means, you are very conceited indeed. By setting aside our pride and trusting in God, we open ourselves to a world of blessings, peace, and true success in our lives. Remember, it is okay not to have all the answers. As long as we know whom to turn to for guidance, do not let pride block your blessings. And number five, neglect of prayer and praise. Our problem is not finding time for God, but remembering to use the time we have we should devote ourselves to prayer as we devote ourselves to our daily needs. So when we neglect prayer, it is like drifting away from our safe harbor. Think of being on a boat and floating in a vast ocean. Close to shore is a safe harbor where you anchored every day. It provides protection, guidance, and a sense of peace. But gradually, you start neglecting the anchor. One day, you skip it thinking it is okay to float a bit. The next day, you do the same. Slowly, you find yourself far out at sea, adrift, and the once familiar harbor is barely visible. This is similar to our relationship with God. Lewis tells us that prayer in itself does not change God, it changes us. It puts us in the proper posture of humility and reminds us of our dependence on Him. When we consistently engage in prayer and praise to God, we anchor ourselves in His presence. But neglecting these practices is like neglecting that anchor, leaving us to drift away from God's protective harbor. Lewis also says that it is through prayer that God shapes us and prepares us to face life's challenges. Without this constant connection, we are adrift vulnerable to life's storms. The Bible is filled with calls for constant communication with God. In Philippians 4, 6, we are reminded, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition. With thanksgiving, present your requests to God. The scripture highlights the importance not only of praying, but also of offering praise and thanks affirming our trust in Him. By doing so, we strengthen our anchor, ensuring that we remain close to our spiritual harbor. Lewis also says that neglecting prayer is like forgetting to bring a compass while navigating. Without it, we can easily get lost and stray off course. And also that we must be persistent in prayer, even when we do not see immediate results. True faith is maintained through constant practice, not just in times of need.
The narrative of Jonah clearly illustrates the importance of continuous communication with God. When God called Jonah to go to Nineveh, he fled, choosing to board a ship in the opposite direction. He tried to escape the divine calling and, in doing so, found himself in the midst of a violent storm. By neglecting his duty in connection with God, he drifted even further from his spiritual harbour. Only when he was in the belly of a great fish, after praying and repenting, was he set back on the right path. Jonah's story is a clear representation of what can happen when we neglect our spiritual duties, like prayer and praise, and how we can always return to God, our safe refuge, no matter how far we have drifted. In our busy lives, it is easy to think we can skip a prayer session today or set aside a daily devotion or miss a moment of praise to God tomorrow. Maybe you are thinking that handling kids and grandkids while they go back to school now is the priority or that your other family or work obligations are more important at the moment. Or maybe you are just thinking that you do not have enough time to devote 20 or 30 minutes to God every day. But each time we do this, it is like allowing our boat to drift further from that safe harbor. Over time, we may find ourselves lost in the vastness of life's challenges. Prayer and praise are more than mere displays of devotion. They are channels of blessings, just as rain nourishes the earth, leading to blooming flowers and abundant crops. Constant prayer and sincere praise open the floodgates of heaven, allowing God's blessings to flow into our lives. When we communicate with God through prayer, we align our desires with His will, creating a path for blessings that meet our truest needs. On the other hand, praise is our acknowledgement of God's sovereignty, a genuine gratitude for His works. When we praise, we recognize and celebrate the blessings we have already received, whether great or small. We also recognize and celebrate the blessings and breakthroughs we hope to receive. This grateful heart, in turn, attracts even more blessings. Psalm 67, 5, 6 beautifully illustrates this. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. The scripture clearly links praise with the bestowal of blessings. So by embracing a life rich in prayer and filled with praise, we not only anchor ourselves in God, but also position ourselves to receive His abundant blessings. Remember this. As we move forward in life, let us be wise. Let us identify the barriers in our lives, remove them, and realign ourselves with God's purpose, ensuring that we do not block, but welcome the blessings He has for us. May today be a day of transformation, opening, and abundant blessings. Our Creator, in His infinite wisdom, has given us free will, and with that comes the responsibility of the choices we make. If our hearts and minds are full of doubt, negativity, or distractions, it becomes difficult for God's blessings to find their rightful place. In our lives, the ever-flowing river is always there. We just need to be open and ready to receive from it. Do not block your blessings. Let them flow. For all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can receive all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God, Heavenly Father, Creator of all things in heaven and on earth, I exalt your mighty name. I thank you, Lord, for you are the giver of all good gifts and the source of abundant blessings. Lord, today I come before your throne with a humble heart, asking for your forgiveness for the times I have, knowingly or unknowingly, place barriers in the way of your blessings. Please purify my heart and guide me to always remain open and receptive to your abundant grace. 
Father, may you forgive my trespasses, just as I forgive all those who trespass against me. In Jesus' name, I declare that every barrier in my life, every obstacle hindering my blessings, be uprooted and cast away. Every chain of doubt, fear and unbelief that binds me, I break them now. In Jesus' name, I rebuke spiritual laziness, every spirit of negativity, resentment or pride that may be acting against my spiritual growth. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare that everything is working in my favor and not against me. Father, may I walk in the fullness of your blessings. I thank you, Lord, for the blessings I have already received and for those yet to come. Lord, I thank you for healing me. I thank you for your divine protection, and I thank you for your incredible grace and goodness. Lord, I present my loved ones before you. I ask that you protect them, guide them, and bless them abundantly. Father, just as you have revealed to me the importance of not blocking your blessings, I pray that their hearts also be receptive to this truth. Protect them from every force that may be acting against them. And in Jesus' name, may they experience an overflow of your grace, love, and favor in every area of their lives. As I pray this prayer along with all those who are listening, Lord, I thank you for every heart that is humbled before you now. I pray that a powerful wave of spiritual awakening and understanding sweeps through each heart. May the scales fall from our eyes so that we can clearly see the ways we may be blocking our own blessings. Ignite in us a fervent desire to draw closer to you, to live in harmony with your will, and to be open vessels ready to receive your infinite gifts. Thank you, Father, for hearing and answering my prayer. With an expectant heart, I look forward to the manifestation of your abundant blessings in my life. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. I would like to thank everyone who reached the end of this video and prayed with us. It is always wonderful to be a part of your daily life. God bless each one of you and your families. See you in the next video.